get on with the war. But now the war was with winter as well as with the Germans. For the fighting soldier, times when the other warmer Far East War seemed almost attractive. From the Dutch coast to the Alps, frost, snow, and ice-bound roads. Somehow on these roads must be carried every shell and bullet, every can of fuel, every mouthful of rations, every long-awaited cigarette. And as for the really heavy stuff, lethal weapons, now lethal in a new way. On the airfields, skis, a constant fight to keep planes skyworthy for when the mists might disperse. But just the weather that one guy had been waiting for, just the weather to ground the Allied planes and allow Hitler to launch his long-planned counterattack, that counterattack of which the Allies never believed him capable. December 1944, Ardennes. Allied transport burning on the mistbound roads. In the ditches, outnumbered Americans seeking to evade the gray host that has come upon them, unexpectedly out of the fog. In the rocky wooded Ardennes, weakly held, heavy new Tiger tanks forced their way through the Allied line on the same battlefield as the German success of May 1940. With this surprise, the enemy hopes for a real breakthrough, a drive even as far as Antwerp to slice the Allied armies into two. A last gamble, all or nothing. But even after the shock on the Allied side, there is enough strength to contain the swelling bulge of the enemy penetration. To the commanders in the field, the German stroke causes anxiety. But it is anxiety tempered by the knowledge that the further the chicken sticks his neck out, the easier it will be to chop it off. Bastogne, deep in the bulge. There an elated enemy awaits the fall of this vital road junction. How good it is to be advancing again. Have a captured American cigarette or cigar. Now fall, Bastogne. Obstinately, Bastogne refuses to fall. Though hard pressed and short of supplies, its American defenders are determined to hold out, even though surrounded. To a demand to surrender, their commander replies, nuts. Then to their aid, a change in the weather. Airborne again, the Allied air fleets use their sky to full advantage. Down to besiege Bastogne go supplies and ammunition from scores of transports. At the same time, down onto the enemy supply lines go cascades of bombs and streams of cannon fire. of everything and with Bastogne a lead weight across their communications, the German spearheads grind to a halt above the Meuse Valley. Unable to advance further, they take shelter from the Allied guns. The situation, they feel, is tough, though far from desperate. Soon supplies will come up. Soon a loophole in the Allied line will be found. It'll be all right. It has to be. Then on the morning of New Year's Day, the Luftwaffe appears in strength for the first time since anyone can remember. Throughout Belgium, it cracks down to destroy Allied aircraft as they lie parked on the fields. From the ground, gunners and airmen fight back. Everywhere where they can get off the ground, Allied fighters rise to join battle with the German intruders. To the Allies,
realize the battle of New Year's Day comes as a complete surprise. Everywhere, black, smoking shells of aircraft are proof of the effectiveness of the attack. But before they can regain their bases, the German pilots are pounced on by scores of avenging British and American fighters. Over snowy fields, fighter by fighter, Goering's long harbored air strength falls out of the wintry sky. Meanwhile, in the Ardennes, the Americans have recaptured the initiative, moving step by step back over the lost ground. Battered and squeezed from three sides, the Germans begin to turn back, seek ways of getting out, then finally run. Hitler's counteroffensive is over, and he has won neither time nor relief. The army will continue to fight on, but for the Luftwaffe, the twilight of the gods. <laughs> 